What if you could just break out your checkbook, write a nice little check, slide it over to the person who you hurt, and say, we're going to wipe away your entire history. We're going to wipe away all the ill feelings, all the negativity, all the atrocities that happened to you, your family members, and their parents. We're going to just write this check, and history will no longer remember this. We'll never speak on the history of this, these events again. We'll white out all the black words on the page of history, never to be seen. No more movies, no more discussion, no more ill feelings, no more derogatory words. It's all gone. We'll disappear just by writing this check. Would you do that? What if there's something you had another option? What if you could come and apologize, recognize the mistake, the betrayals of not only your mistakes, but your ancestors' mistakes? They're not just blessing someone with a check, but blessing them with a conversation of understanding to really see the pain through their eyes, the pain that they still live through, the atrocities that they experienced, the ones that their ancestors experienced, the ones they had to live through every day and look for not to blot out history, but to change the future. Which role would you take? Would you be interested? Would you be interested in said conversation? Or would you rather just do nothing and continue to ignore the past? We're going to talk about that and much more in this episode of the Past to Present Podcast with your host, Al McGrint. Stay tuned. How do you mend a broken heart? How do you fix something or fix a relationship where somebody hurt you? What do you do? Do you apologize? Do you come to somebody and tell them, hey, yo, I'm sorry? Well, man out there, when you cheat on your wife, when you cheat on the woman that you love, how do you fix it? Do you come back to her, apologize? Maybe bring her some roses, some pretty, some gifts. Women, when you do something to your husband, your man, to someone you love, your family member, how do you apologize? How do you fix when you truly hurt somebody? I mean, hurt somebody to the core. Do you apologize? Do you give them an opportunity to have a conversation? Do you try to listen to how they felt, how they feel about it? Truly try to understand their pain. Not just the pain they felt in the moment, but they felt the pain they felt afterwards. Do you really sit down and listen? Have that conversation. Not try to tell them how they feel. Not try to tell them about how their life is after this transgression. But try to understand how their life is. Try to understand and just listen. Have empathy for what they're going through. For what you've done. Be truly apologetic for what you've done. Do you do that? Or do you approach them with, Listen, I know I did this to you, you know, I need I cheated on you, but you know what? I think you should just forget about it. I think you should just forget about it and just get over it because, look, it happened. That was like two weeks ago, man. It was like a couple of months ago. Like, seriously, man, how long are you going to hold on to me cheating? You know what I'm saying? Man, you all right, man. You you all right, man. I seen you and your homegirls. I was chilling. I was at the restaurant. Everything was lovely. It all was good. But you all right, so what, what you talking about, you was you was in the house crying and stuff. You wasn't in the house crying, man. You probably was sitting there watching Lifetime or something, you know. You probably was on the phone with somebody else. You, you, you all right, man. You don't, all that stuff you talking about, you good. Just, just assume that you know how somebody feel after you hurt them. Just assume that they okay because you didn't see or you chose not to see the pain that they experiencing and still experiencing because you can't see what's happening. Under your skin. Because when you turn your back or you choose not to recognize the pain someone's going through. The anguish, the hurt. They're still in that life. What do you choose to do? See, most people can't have that conversation. Because having that conversation means you have to acknowledge that you caused hurt and pain in someone's life. That you altered someone's future. That you changed someone's life. And not for the better, but for the worse. And that there has to be something done. Some form of reparations paid in order to fix the damage that you made and the damage you created. But are you open to that? Are you open to that conversation? Let's open up the floor to a conversation right now on a much bigger scale than cheating on somebody. 
to an argument you had at a family picnic or with a family member. Let's open the floor up to something a lot deeper than those wounds. Let's open it up to the descendants of African American slaves. Let's open up the conversation to all those who went through the Civil Rights Movement, who went through the Jim Crow laws, who still to this day are suffering from the past transgressions with history that blows the history dealt to them who are still suffering. Let's talk about how you pay back those. How do you heal a broken heart? How do you heal from wounds that haven't been recognized yet and still choose not to be a conversation? Oh man, think about it. When somebody cheated on you, that's playing movies about cheating. I mean, go a lifetime and there's plain movies about a man cheating on a woman, a woman cheating on a man, but does that truly help healing? Or does it deepen the pain? When we talk about slavery, come on, there's a million movies about slavery. You got 12 years of slavery, you got the butler, you got Django, where you know he got back, you know, against the slave master, so maybe that healed it. Seeing a revolt where an African-American attacks and kill all the slave masters, burn down the plantation. You got birth of a nation. I mean, you got all these things where slavery, slaves and fought back. So maybe that's our reparations right there is that we know that the, um, some people in the net, the net, um, was it Nat Cole? No, that's not Nat Cole. I can't, Nat Turner. I'm sorry. I didn't call him Nat Cole. He's a singer. Nat Turner, when he fought back and revolted against his slave masters, maybe that's enough reparations right there. But us to sit here and look at ourselves and look in the mirror and say, you know what? We can now heal. Maybe if, you know, America finally decides to write us a check like they wrote the Japanese people who were put in these concentration camps during World War II. And we're not going to talk about history. I get it. You don't want to talk about that. But what if they just wrote us a nice 20000 check to every African American? Would that change or destroy the wounds? Would that truly heal the wounds? What if they paid for free college for us? What if they gave every African American and children free college? Would that then put us on the same scale, on the same level as our white counterpartners? Will we still will be in the same economic? Will we finally be able to catch up after being so far behind? Will it all be equal now? Will we all be playing on an equal playing ground? Will all of this erase the history of our past? Or is this just a band-aid? Or even more crazier, maybe it's just all a pipe dream that we all believe that one day we can not only be healed from it, but we can receive something that our ancestors never believed they'll get. An actual apology for all their ancestors have went through and all that we continue to go through. Most people in America right now, in fact, 87% of people, don't believe that reparation should be paid to the descendants of African-American slaves. And you're probably asking, well, why do they not feel that way? What, they don't feel like slavery really happened? Most people will say this. If they pay back, we pay back reparations. If the government paid back reparations, they would bankrupt the country. Yahoo Finances estimated that it takes $17 trillion to pay back reparations to the descendants of African-American slaves. $17 trillion. But then I ask, okay, if we get that money back, then what? And then most pundits say, okay, you give African Americans twenty, fifty thousand, hundred thousand dollars. What is that going to do? Are they going to go and invest that money? Are they going to go buy a home now? Are they going to buy their forty acres in you? Are they going to do something to create generational wealth? The answer to that question is absolutely no. Because see, here's my issue with giving someone just a check. Money should come with instructions, but it's the one thing that don't. If you go to a store right now and buy a brand new smartphone, pay $1,000 for a brand new smartphone, go buy a brand new Cadillac, brand new car, brand new TV, what all comes with that? A man you talking about and discussing and teaching you how to work those things. Now, if you give somebody a check for $100,000, what comes with that? There's no manual. There's nothing to teach you how to handle and how to deal with that money. So, okay, of course, you're going to go how you might take a trip. You might go buy your family some things. You might go buy some things that you never had, some things that you always wanted. Maybe make some repairs to your house, to you, buy you a new car. Get you a new wardrobe. Get you some jewelry. Get yourself real fly. But then what? But then what? Is it going to put you on the same level as the white counterparts? No, because see, if you're going to give us the money, we need something else with it too. 
We need education with it on how we can invest the money, how we can work in a capitalistic system that wasn't built for African Americans. But see, that's part of the conversation. We talk about reparations. We got to talk about what all comes with it. It's bigger than just writing a check to us like you did the Japanese after World War II when you wrote them that 20,000 check, which was historical. It was historical when you wrote them an apology letter and gave them $20,000 for the land that you stole. And let's keep it gangster real quick. You stole the land. It wasn't because you thought they were spies. I mean, it sounded good, and you know, it helped the American people justify why you did what you did, but let's just keep it gunner with it. Well, the real intention was, this has happened, right? Peep this, people. This is what happened, okay? So let's just say, you know, you gave somebody a house, right? You had some property. You gave somebody a house, and it's near swamp land. You know, you didn't really want the house because it was trash. It was all beat up and stuff. He was like, man, you can have that house. Then... Two, three years later, you walk by the same house you gave to this guy, right? You say, yo, you know, he didn't built it up. It's looking good, you know what I mean? Got brand new roof, brand new windows, you know. We go in the house. It got the uh, marble all on the floor. You know, got granite countertops, stainless steel in the kitchen, you know, the wood. You know, everything looks love. Everything looks lovely. You start to say, yo, man, I gave you a house. Yeah, it wasn't that good. But, you know, now I kind of want that house back. So what I'm going to do is, this is what I'm going to do, yo. I feel like you betrayed me, so now I'm going to lock you up because I feel like I'm at war with this dude across the street, and I feel like you're part of his team because you look like him, and you're cool with him, and sometimes you hang with him, and that's your family, so I'm going to lock you up, and I'm going to take your house. That's what happened with the Japanese. The Americans took the house because it became wealthy, but we're going completely off subject when we talk about African Americans and slavery and reparations. The point is I'm talking about the Japanese and what happened with them is because I need to explain that to under so you understand why reparations were paid to them. But with African Americans, what happened to us? What happened to us? We know what happened to the Japanese. But what happened to us? What happened to us? We were brought over here on boats. Not by free will, we were chained. Many of us died, our ancestors died in those boats, in the bowels of them boats before arriving to America. We were forced to get free labor, forced to work in treacherous situations, with no promise for our future, with no economic growth for our work. We were forced to build colleges that we couldn't attend, our children couldn't attend at the time, build a White House, build a country that though we loved, didn't love us. We were forced to do all this, forced to be slaves. And when slavery finally ended, President Lincoln promised us 40 acres and mule. But after he was assassinated, those 40 acres and mule were then given to our slave owners. Why was it given to our slave owners? They were given to our slave owners as reparations for losing out on the free labor that the slaves was giving them. So the reparations that should have been paid to us, the reparations that you don't want to be paid to us even today, was paid. Was paid in the time to our slave owners. So you ask why today are you trying to get reparations? Well, we're trying to get reparations today because when you could have made right on the debt that you owed us African American slaves, you didn't choose to pay it to us. You deceived us. You deceived us after promises for the acres and mule. Promises freedom after we fought in the Civil War against the um, Confederate Army, helping the Union Army defeat the Confederate Army. We were deceived. After slaves were free, it didn't mean that we were now free to roam and live the most amazing life. See, even after slaves were free, there were laws put in place that forced people back into different forms of slavery. Just because you rename something don't mean you take it away. And this is for all the people who want to say, well, slavery was so long ago, and it doesn't affect people today. Well, I'm, gonna t- I'm telling you how it affects two people today. So what I need you to do is sit back and listen. Listen to the conversation we have, because this is your opportunity to learn and see how African Americans feel and the pain that we're still going through in the history of how we got to the pain we're in today. Even after we got past slavery, we then ran into a whole new wall. It's called the Jim Crow laws. Y'all remember Jim Crow laws when you were segregated? You couldn't eat at a lunch counter, couldn't drink at certain water fountains, couldn't use certain bathrooms, couldn't go to certain schools. See, we had to fight for those civil rights. We couldn't vote. We 
couldn't vote, couldn't go to colleges, couldn't get the good books, couldn't get her kids good educations, being brutally beaten by police. Did you remember what happened on Black Wall Street and how it was destroyed? An economic black city built on wealth was destroyed all because of hatred and ignorance, jealousy, led to the destruction of a whole city. So when you're asking us, well, what do y'all want reparations? What does reparations look like? I couldn't tell you what reparations would look like. I hear a talk of free college education, and I like that. I like the idea of free college education. That's a start. That's a start. But before we even talk about paying reparations back, you know what the first reparation should be paid, in my opinion, is? An apology. Because like I said before, when reparations were paid to Japanese Americans who were put in camps during World War II, what was given to them was not only a $20,000 check, but more importantly, a letter of an apology for the errors and mistakes, for the mistreatment that they would suffer. To this day, I don't know of any African Americans that actually received a letter of apology from the government for all the, tra the um, transgressions that were put on us, all the atrocities that they had to live through. I don't see a letter of apology. The fact that we still are being murdered in our own house by police officers, murdered after traffic stops, even though we doing everything we're supposed to. The fact that I still got to talk to my little kids, my five-year-old, my 10-year-old, about police brutality, how to act and how to protect themselves when they're out here. Are you telling me that this world has changed that much for African Americans? There's still a wage gap between black and white people. There's still more African Americans and Hispanic people in jail than white people. And you might say, well, they commit more crimes, so you can't go by the fact they commit more crimes. Well, see, here's the thing about committing crimes and stuff. A lot of people are in jail right now, wrongfully accused, and don't have the money to truly pay for adequate re um, representation in courts. So you go in there with these public defendant lawyers, and they're, they're, they're trumped up all these charges and telling you, yo, we're going to give you life in prison if you don't sign this deal and take these five years. What you think you're going to take? I can even give you five years of my life or give you my entire life. Even though I didn't commit the crime, I'm going to sign the five years because I know I don't have a chance of winning. And these prisons are built on that. I see why you want to give free college education because here's the problem. A lot of slaves built these colleges that we're attending today. So why not give free education? But see, there's still not enough. We need wealth training. We need educating on finances, on how this capitalistic system works. Reparations need to be paid, and let's stop with this uh, voter suppression. Let's stop with the segregation, not just for black men, but for women. Let's stop with it. Reparations look like writing me an apology letter saying, yo, I'm sorry. Let's start this way. You cheated on your uh, old woman. When you stole that candy bar, when you skipped class, when you made mistakes, you broke your uh, neighbor's window, you wrote a letter of apology. You said, I'm sorry for those things. You said you're sorry for the small things, so why is it so hard to say you're sorry for the big things? The other issue is that a lot of Caucasian or white Americans feel like, why should I have to pay a debt for my ancestors? I didn't have slaves. I didn't have nothing to do with slavery. Those was my ancestors. Why should I have to pay the debt to my, my ancestors made to people who are not technically slaves because there's not too many people that still walk on this earth that can say they were actually slaves. So why should I have to pay a debt to these people when I didn't have the slaves? Why should I be responsible for that? And here's what I say about that, okay? Because I had a conversation with somebody. I said, I told him, um, a Caucasian white man who was, we had this big conversation about racism and I appreciate him for having the conversation with me in a respectful, positive way, where he expressed his views, I expressed mine. But the point being is, what I said to him was this. Are you familiar with the word estate? And I'm not talking about house, I'm talking about estate. For instance, if one of your relatives die, they leave you their estate. Now, what comes with their estate? All their finances, all their wealth, their home, clothes, jewelry, all the things that they hold dear to their heart comes to you in a form of estate. But what else comes to you in the estate? Also come to you all their debts. All things that they owe. So if they owe the bank $50,000, then guess what? You as the executioner of their estate, you must now take on such debt. If they own the full bill, $200, $300, you got to pay that. 
If they owe Uncle Sam $20,000, guess what? Execution of their estate has to pay that. Because just as much of you living good, you benefiting from being executioner of estate, you also have to take the negative with it and pay back all debts that's owed. So when you want to say, me as an American, white American, who had nothing to do with slavery and what my ancestors did, you are the executioner of their estate. So technically being said, as well as you took all the benefits from them and what they done, what they all the money they made off of free labor, you also need to pay back the debts. Because black people have yet to be paid back the debts for all their free labor to build these colleges, build in the White House, or build in America the way it is, to keeping up all these lands, all these plantations have not been paid for that debt. And I know you worry about trillions of dollars and bankrupting the country, but I got a feeling that we can figure out a way. If we put our economics, we put our head together, we can figure out a way to pay back these debts without truly bankrupting this country. I mean, think about this. We waste a lot of food. We waste a lot of money. I think we can fix this, and we can fix this problem. I think reparations have to start in the form of an apology. So if you're asking me, do we need reparations? Absolutely. But what reparations look like is a very complex question. And not one to have on a TV show or a podcast, but one that's going to have to be had behind closed doors. But what's most important is, it's time till we recognize that slavery did exist. It's time to recognize that all the issues and all the pain from slavery didn't go away when the slaves were free. All that happened during the Jim Crow law didn't go away once we won the civil rights and we won the right to vote. That lot of pain and those wounds still linger into our children today and into our children's future. So if we're truly trying to amend a broken heart, amend all these wounds that still live inside the black community, then we have to truly be real. In my opinion, Caucasian and white people have to be willing to sit down at the table and not talk, but finally listen to understand the pain that we're feeling. It's time for you to Look at us and apologize for the, the, the issues, the atrocities that your family, your ancestors made. It's time to recognize the pain that a whole race is feeling. To recognize and acknowledge it so that we can heal as a country, we can heal as a people, so we can create a better life for all of our children. It's time to recognize that this extends way further than just you and me. And I get it, you know, I get it. A lot of times, that's what it truly comes down to is certain parts of the community and parts of the world, we feel like we are the forgotten. People always tell about how Donald Trump won, how Donald Trump won. I'm not going to a whole Donald Trump spill, but here's the, recon- the real- realization of how Donald Trump won. See, Donald Trump spoke to people who felt forgotten. And a lot of those Americans who are against reparations, I guarantee you, those are the same people who feel forgotten. Those people who live in poor or impoverished communities who are saying, well, what about me? And what about my suffering? What I'm going through? You're ready to give these people money, but what about what I'm going through? And they feel forgotten. They feel lost in the system. So until we recognize all people and we learn to heal the mistakes of the past, We certainly can't push to a brighter future. And we can't make America great again. And with all the past atrocities, they didn't make it great before. I do think that reparations need to be paid out, but in many forms. One being education and teaching black folks and people how to recognize money, how to treat and handle money, how to build and create wealth. I mean, think about it. 2,000 something billionaires, there's only 11, Africa, 11 or 13 African American billionaires in the world. Think about that for a second. When you sit here and you go through, well, there's people who are wealthy in this country and there's people who are well off. But there's also more people who are not well off, who's living in poverty situations, who do not know where the next meal is going to come from. There's people who still walk out their door every day with the fear of what's going to happen to them, not because their attentions are due harm, but because people can't look past the color of their skin. And because there were certain factions of this country who were taught to hate, despite 
how well a person is dressed or how well a person speaks. And until we erase the past hate and we learn to deal with and heal the past hate, then we can get on to healing our future. So reparations need to be paid, but we also need to figure out what does that look like. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here for another episode of Past the Present. And as you turn this one off, as you stop watching, I want you all to sit there for one second and think about it. Just think to yourself, what do you have to apologize for? Who do you have to apologize to? Who do you have to forgive and who should you forgive? What can you do and who do you got to pay reparations to? Because we all got to pay reparations to someone. Who do you have to? As we continue this conversation, I hope when it comes time election again that you really take this serious, that you really think about those people who suffered and how they still suffer, and you step up off your high box to not look down, but look in the eyes of the people who are still experiencing pain. And don't feel sorry for them. Have empathy for them. Have empathy and apologize to your, the transgressions that your ancestors have made. So we can look at each other as equals one day and not think of one above the other. Thank you for being here for another episode. Peace.